preacher, Brian Mason. In 1 Peter, chapter 2, and verse 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Heavenly Father, how can we thank thee enough that those who are in Christ are that chosen generation, that royal priesthood, because they have exchanged the filthy rags of sin and been clothed with the royal apparel having been cleansed through the precious blood of thine own Son. O oh, Father God, how can we thank thee enough that sing thy praises and worship thee in spirit and in truth, that we who are thine own, who can call thee Abba Father, have been brought into the banqueting house. And thy, thy love is a banner over us. O oh, Father God, as we turn again to thy word this afternoon, may the Holy Spirit take of thy word and speak to our hearts again that we will be built up more and more in thy word, more and more in thy beloved Son, and to have that hunger, that thirst after the deep, deep things of God. Oh, this is asked in the name which is above all other names, that of the Lord Jesus Christ, thy beloved one, that you will receive the glory in the Son. Amen. Would you like to turn with me, please? To the book of Exodus and chapter 19. As we continue our study in how God Himself used Moses, His servant Moses, as His intercessor. Yes. Over the past months, we have seen how Moses was prepared, having first failed so miserably that when he saw that he could not do, he was, after some persuasion and encouragement, he came to accept that he could not do what God had asked him to do. And in full and complete surrender to God, God was able to use Moses as his vessel so that none of the glory went to Moses. All the glory went to Almighty God. And in this chapter we'll see such fellowship, such a wonder, 
such a relationship between God and Moses at such a level that we had not experienced so far in the Old Testament. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt. So three months had passed by. Quite a tumultuous three months. Three months in which the people had been full of murmuring. Remember the bitter waters of Meribah. the complaining because of lack of food. And then again the lack of water at Rephidim. God had done great and mighty things with his people, bringing them out of Egypt, taking them across the other side, having parted the waters of the Red Sea having disposed of the Egyptians. Yet we see that when they sang, it was a song of deliverance rather than a song of faith. We're moving on here. in that they've been in the wilderness three months and God had to move them on further in his purposes. And would they be up to it? That is the question. Would they accept that which God was about to offer them? For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness. And there Israel camped before the mount. Here this vast, vast number of God's people set apart in the wilderness and about to meet their God in a way which they had not met before. God was about to offer them a deeper understanding of himself. He was about to want to call them to be separated unto himself. And in this chapter and particularly these first verses, we'll be able to see similarities between what God was offering then and what God has done in Christ. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, the Lord called unto Moses out of the mountain. And the Lord is still calling today. He's calling a people to be separated unto himself. Completely separated from the things of the world, the flesh and the devil. saying, Thus shalt thou say unto the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel what confidence God had in his servant Moses that he could speak to him 
and he could use him as it were like a mediator and we have that mediator between God and man today the man Christ Jesus and we don't need any other mediators we don't need any priests or ministers to to go on our behalf unto God no no because we are called to be a royal priesthood that when the Son of God himself dwells within us he's the mediator he's our confidence that there are no barriers altar rails are barriers confessionals are barriers no God has provided that new and living way in his son do you have that confidence that Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone is your mediator between God and yourself verse 4 he has seen what I did unto the Egyptians yes they had the evidence before them because we're told that on the seashore where the bodies of the Egyptians God had brought a full and final end to the pursuing army of the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles wings and brought you unto myself God himself saying that he had brought these people whom Moses was leading and guiding unto himself and it's the same now in the in our day that God's people are the body of Christ those who belong to Christ those who have a living relationship with God in Christ those who know that their sin has been removed their sin has been dealt with their sin has been forgiven through the cleansing of the blood of the Son of God himself glory to God glory to the precious precious blood of Jesus there is power power wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb as your heart been cleansed Has your sin been dealt with and been removed as far as the east is from the west? Interestingly, the psalmist doesn't tell us that our sins were removed as far as from the north, from the south, because that could be measured no east from the west cannot be measured and in the sight of God when that perfect offering the atoning blood of the Lord Jesus Christ has become personal to ourselves 
and he has become a personal savior. Oh, can we thank him enough? Yet this is not dead religion I'm talking about. It's a living God. Dead religion will take you to hell because it doesn't have a savior in it. Verse 5 Now therefore if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant what an offer is being made here. Obey my voice. Keep my covenant. Because God was about to make known to Moses what he was calling upon his people to obey. What he was offering them through his covenant to be a people wholly separated unto God. Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. God himself, the Lord, saying, all the earth is mine. And he was offering to the Hebrews, those who come out of Egypt, to be his own people, to be his own nation, and that they would be soon born into a nation. That's God. He didn't choose any other nation. And Israel still has that very, very special position with God. God hasn't cast them aside forevermore. He's brought them back into the land. And he will still fulfill all that he has to fulfill for that nation with the second coming of the Messiah. Are you prepared? For that coming, fearful times are coming upon the earth because Jesus is coming. The scriptures make it so clear that he is coming. All that has been fulfilled so far according to the scriptures has been in line with God, with God's word. So with nothing at all to doubt that when God's word speaks of a second coming of his son he will come. He will come for those who are covered whose lives are covered by the atoning blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who have had their sins forgiven for no sinner can dwell in heaven. Are you ready? Are you expectant? Are you looking for his coming? Because it will be an awful time for those who are left behind. Because there will be no, no restraint of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will be, have been withdrawn. There will be no people of God, no Christians left behind to pray. This is what God was offering. To be separated unto himself. The people of God that Moses was leading.
And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And at the opening of today's meeting, read that verse from 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. And what I'm speaking about here very much has that the words of Peter. But ye are a chosen generation. Yes, those who have been brought out of Egypt were a chosen generation. God was speaking to them about being priests. But the great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, is the head of his body. He is the head of the royal priesthood. And all those who belong to him are kings and priests unto God. Part of his body, part of the royal priesthood. Have you realized that? Are you acting in that knowledge that you are part of the royal priesthood of God? And to be part of the royal priesthood of God, our garments have to be spotless. And they can only be spotless having been cleansed and continually cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unholy nation. The holy nation is the body of Christ, made up of, out of every kindred, tribe, and nation. For the purpose of showing forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness. Have you realized what you've been called out from? Because you were rebels unto God. And if you are still not clothed in those royal robes of the blood of Jesus Christ, you are still a rebel in the sight of a holy God. Because your sin has not been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. But when we are brought out of darkness, we come into what is most marvelous light, walking in the light of God, walking in the light of the Holy Spirit, not stumbling around with the things of this world, the encumbrances of this world, not being concerned about the things of the flesh, concerned only of that which is to the glory of God, to the praise of God to worship him in spirit and in truth, to worship him from the very depths of our beings. What was being offered to those in the wilderness, they couldn't grasp. The holiness of God was too much for them. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord hath spoken we will do. Ah, they said it, but they said it without any conviction whatsoever. 
They said it from the head and not the heart. They said it from unsurrendered hearts. Let us be real in these days, real with God. Are you serious with God? Do you have that hunger and that thirst for the deeper things of God, the deepest things of God? For they're all in Christ and they're all available for those who ask. Not ask for that which is of their own sufficiency. They ask, they actually beg of God. That he will give that which is of himself, not the material things of this world, that which is of the very life and essence of God himself, of the very character of God, the very divine nature that he calls for a life separated wholly to God because God will not be mocked. He has to see that we mean business with him, that we're real with him, that we're in earnest with him. He will not fail you once he finds yes that we will go not just some of the way with him, but all of the way with him. Then he does to his own perfect will in us and through us. Not to my will, but thine be done, said the Lord Jesus. And of the Son of God says that to the Father. How much more do we need to say? And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes. Take note of the word sanctify. Set apart for God. Cleansed. Cleansed. God needs cleansed vessels. Those who had not just forgiveness of sin, but delivered from the very power of sin. How vital it is to understand the atoning blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The power to cleanse from all sin and all stain and present us as spotless before the Father. That's what God can use. And how his heart grieves in these days. Because so, so few will answer that call to be sanctified, to be set apart, to not be concerned about being in the limelight. But hidden with in God with Christ. Hidden there. That's the place where God can use us hidden in himself. As nothing to this world. The world meaning nothing to us. 
and seeking only that God will receive the glory in whatever he does in us and through us. May he lead us on to the deeper things of himself continuously and be ready against the third day for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Had words been heard like that before? The Lord coming down to his people. But would his people respond to him? And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall be surely put to death. That was the Old Testament. So holy is God that he could not share his holiness with those who were not wholly set apart for himself. And it's only that the life of Christ himself in dwelling the cleansed vessel who can receive the very life of God within that vessel. It's not a case now of having those borders that we would touch, we will be struck deaf, dead. No. God, his wonderful plan to indwell the hearts of men and women. And that's what it is, being sanctified, wholly filled with the life of God, completely cleansed, set apart, consecrated, everything for God. There shall not an hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. Have you been to the mount, the rock of Christ Jesus? Do you, do you know him living? moment by moment within you, moment by moment stayed by his power, moment by moment the very glory of God, the very power of God being released by the indwelling Holy Spirit because we've been baptized in the Holy Spirit we've received the person of the Holy Spirit are you jealous for that? do you know what it is to have that within you? or are you as it were still on the borders, on the boundaries, you've not entered in. It's not the experiences here. It's having the very word of God being outworked in us, outworked through us. The one who is life, the one who is the living word. And knowing the written word, written upon our hearts, not in stone, but on our fleshly hearts. 
And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people. And they washed their clothes. Yes. Ceremonially, yes, they were cleansed. But he's being cleansed moment by moment. Having that walk with the Saviour. Having that walk with the living Lord. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day, and come not. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning, that there were thunders and lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. God came down in the cloud and the people had the fear of God within them. God still comes down today he comes to indwell us and God will still come down today in his own glory and mighty power his own thunderings and lightnings when he finds those who will meet his conditions let us be real. There are so many in these days say that they're seeking revival. Calm on God's terms, his conditions. Get down in the word of God. And see what is required. Be real with God. Don't play with God. And the starting point, the starting point has to be being fully sanctified, being cleansed vessels, being wholly set apart for God. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the never end of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on the smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. When God comes down, he comes down as God. He comes down as he is, will come down, not on any preconceived ideas of man, only to fulfill what God himself wants to fulfill and he will fulfill it his own way. Yes, there's that association with fire. Many times in the word of God there is that association with fire. Elijah praying unto God to send down the fire and he did so. The fire of the cloven tongues on the day of Pentecost. God coming down as God in holiness. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount. And the Lord cove Moses up to the top of the mount and Moses went up, Moses obeyed. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down! Charge the people lest they break through. 
unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth upon them. Oh, there are many today who call themselves priests and ministers, who don't even believe, don't even accept the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. How can they be set apart as cleansed vessels when they don't accept, if you don't accept the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ? How can his blood cleanse from all sin and all stain. And without the cleansing of the blood of the Lord Jesus, there is no remission of sin. And no remission of sin means that there's no sanctification, no means of being sanctified and set apart unto a holy God to receive the very holiness and righteousness and purity of God within our own vessels. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou chargest us, saying, Set bounds about the mount and sanctify it. How time more than once the word sanctify is coming out, Sanctify in the Old Testament how much more in the New Covenant is that need, that requirement to obey and seek to be sanctified that so few in these days will. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up to, unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. So Moses went down unto the people and spake unto them. A very challenging word. Have you heard the, the voice, the inner voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to your spirit? Should you have? Then, although I cannot see you, should you be seeking as the word spoken to you, to be set apart unto God, to be cleansed thoroughly, holy, sanctified. Then, as I read this verse, which speaks of being of sanctify. Then just lift up your hand as, and God will see. God will know. And God will grant you his request that you will be sanctified. Set apart wholly for him. And the verse I'm going to read is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for being with me this afternoon. I shall return 
on Friday at 2.30 p.m. British time with the program ever-increasing rep.